What's up guys, ViPreppyV here, and today we are going to be doing the Mo2 Ghost V2 with the Canopy 6S build. And this thing is going to be a beast. So let me go ahead and show you the components I'm going to be using in this build. And remember we're going to be using it for 6S. And so the first thing we're going to be using the camera, we're using the Micro Predator V3. This just came out literally this week. We're using the Hobby Wing 2207 15, uh, 1750 KV motors. And then we're going to be using the Hobby Wing uh, Combo Stack, which has the G2 flight F4 flight controller. And then also the F4, um, not the F4, but the B Heli 32 45 amp ESC, all 4 in 1. And uh, yeah, and then we're also going to be using a Unify Pro Race Edition with the MMCX connector on it. With I have a white noise board on it as well to fit in the stack. And then we also have the Mode 2 Ghost V2 frame with the canopy. So let me kind of just catch up what I did so far on it. Um, I did do a frame assembly uh, in a pri prior video, and I can leave a link to that below as well. Um, but so I have the frame all built uh, except for the canopy on it and I already put in the studs or the bolts in here for the um, stack and I kind of already kind of messed around to see how my stack is going to lay out and I recommend doing that uh, too before you start a build. Uh, what I just did is I kind of played with the spacers see how everything would stack to make sure I'll get that Unify Pro on top with enough room to put the screws on. So now I'm pretty comfortable with what I'm doing. Um, the only thing I was kind of iffy about um, was on this bottom ESC. I know I can flip it around this way, but because I see how the bottom plug sticks out and this kind of is raised up back here. I didn't really care for that. So I took some, it doesn't really touch it. I mean, it's like two millimeters away from it. So I'm pretty comfortable it's not going to touch it ever, but I did put some liquid electric tape on the bottom of it just in case any contact ever doesn't be made with the carbon on the bottom. So what we go ahead and do is I'm going to put this in and just slide in the 401 ESC. Actually before you slide in the 401 ESC let's go ahead and solder up our um, leads here for the XT60. So we can make some room here. And let me go ahead and zoom in. All right, so let's go ahead and solder up the 401 ESC with the main battery leads. And the stack actually already came with pre-soldered XT60 on there, so we're just gonna use that. Let's get my solder out here and pretend these pads on the ES. Actually, we have to pretend the uh, wires on the flight com on the uh, whatever this thing is called on the connector. So it's going to heat it up a little bit. And trick to battery connections. Make sure you have tons of solder on it. Just make it around there. Soaks up that solder. Let me fix that. All right. So we got our wire soldered up. Let's just get our ESC, and we're going to pretend this. So if I haven't explained this already. 
I mean, pretty much when you're building a 6S quad, you have to make sure that your motors can handle 6S and make sure your um, flight controller and your ESC, your video uh, transmitter and your camera can all handle 6S. As long as they can all handle 6S, or you're providing some type of, um, what let's call it, resistor or something to uh, keep it from getting that way, then you should be fine. So now we're going to take that off. This thing is pretty hot, so let me grab some pliers. Let's use my tweezers here. Shouldn't have to hold it down. I'm going to just place it on top of there, like so. I'm going to make some crud on my tip of my side iron. And then we're just going to push it down there, let it flow into the joint. There it goes. And then just release it. Give it a second for it to harden. And that side's done. Same thing on this one. Let it heat up a little bit. Let it all mush together. And then we got another one done. Inspect it real quick, make sure it looks all right. I feel like I can get a little bit more on this side here, so let me just reflow it again. I'm trying in this video to show you a little bit more technique opposed to my other build videos. And another main difference with 6S is the motors. So you pretty much want to keep the same RPM. So 1750 is about equal to 2600 if you're on 4S. Um, but so that's pretty much the mentality. You're having the higher amp draw. You, have, you don't have as many amps being drawn on your battery and on your components, but you're operating at a higher voltage. So you have more of a consistent battery, uh, less sag, especially at the end of a pack. So that's the whole point of 6S. So not necessarily you have more power, but you have more consistency in the pack because you're having less amp draw all around. So we got this all soldered up here. Just want to check the back, make sure no solder leaked out in the back. So we're good. I'm not going to worry about putting a compressor on at the moment. I usually wait to the end to do that. So let me go ahead and zoom out so we can see the frame and putting this together. Alrighty. So we got that, and like I said, I'm just going to slide that on top of there. Good. Next thing is going to do is we're going to mount the motors. I like to put the ESC on first and then mount the motors up. So what I'm going to do is we're going to probably take this off. Just wanted to make sure it fits all right, just make it easier. And then I want to zoom out a lot more. And then we're going to go ahead and put the motors on. I'll probably skip three motors, and you guys can watch me just put the motor on, one of them on. Really, the main thing when you're putting motors on is that you need to use torque, um, not torque seal. Um, now I forget the name of it. Thread lock. And not the permanent one, the semi-permanent one, or the temporary one, whatever you want to call it. I think it's the red one, but it's actually the blue tube. It's really confusing. And uh, pretty much what you want to do is when you're putting motors on, get your bolt out, which with these motors is really weird. Why do they give me gold bolts? Like bronze, brass looking bolts on a black motor. I mean, it's not like there's anything on here that's gold, besides the windings. But anyway, what you want to do is put your bolt in and just kind of check, check that right there. 
see if it zooms in right there. There. So you don't want it to get into the windings. And it does, they did supply you on, with these motors some washers, which I may just use depending on how thick they are. So let me take a look here, dump those out. Oh, these are really thin. So yeah, we'll probably use the washers. So let me grab uh, four washers here. Two, three, four. Put those right there. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is get the motor we want. Just put it there. And I do have a little, well, where did it go? I had a little baggie of a uh, luck of a. Uh, Red locker. A little already out, ready to go. I guess it tipped over. So let's squirt some more on there. All right. So now we're good. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one of these washers, put it on to the nut, to the bolt. And I like to put a little dab. I just like to dip it. I don't like to brushing it on because. This stuff will spread out as it goes into the thread. That's how I was taught in school working on cars. You don't need very much. That's why I just dip it a little tiny bit, a little blob. So what we're going to do is stick that in there. Kind of make sure the wire is going with the arm. And then just kind of start it off by hand. You always want to start off screws by hand. You don't want to start it off with a wrench or you run the possibility of cross threading threading it. So yeah, that's enough. That's good. So I'm going to do the next one with another washer. That's too much. And then in the bottom, you have to like kind of line up the holes where you want them. I wish I can show you because now you're not going to really be able to see in the camera. But right there, we got it. Start that one. Next one. Do that here. This is where it gets tricky because sometimes they're lined, the holes are still not lined up on two screws. You have to kind of like play with it a little bit. Move the motor around and check. Let me take a look here. So it's a little bit cockeyed to that way. Let's use this one here. See if I can get it in there. No, I'm not going to be able to loosen this bolt. And then get it on here. Now we can move it around. Alright, we got that one. And then the last one. And when you tighten these up, you want to make them tight, but you don't want to f wrench it down because this is like, I think, aluminum and it will just strip out. So you don't want to do that. Pretty much everything with a 6S build is the same as a 4S build, except you're just making sure that your components and your motors are all within the specs of 6S. Move this one around a little more. There we go. Let's tighten that up. Kind of like the gold in the bottom. It looks kind of cool. Wish it matched the rest of the frame though. So if you see me tighten them, I'm tightening them in a crisscross pattern, just kind of like a tire, just so it doesn't warp the bottom. 
and then going back over it a little bit, checking it, making sure that they're tight. All right, so they're tight, and that's one motor done right there. So let me go ahead and put the rest of the motors on, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, got all four motors on the quad, and I did actually zip tie two. I did this in the previous video. I just zip tied them temporarily so they're not loose everywhere. And what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to put the 401 ESC on. And remember, these little square things, this is where the battery strap actually will go, like right here. It actually sits a little forward. So we're going to go ahead and install the 401 ESC right here. Make sure that we don't have any contact with any carbon with this. So I'm just double checking it again. Pardon. Not see any contact. I don't see space in there. So there, we're good there. So that's that. And we're going to do this. How we're going to solder this up is going to be a little different than other builds I've done. I actually want to take the wire and go through inside and then solder it up like that from the inside. Give it more protection to the wire just in case something hits it on the outside. You don't have to worry about messing anything up and it actually looks cleaner. The only thing I have to pay attention of is since we are using a canopy, the canopy has this overhang right here so we can't have any overlapping. You know what I'm saying? Like that. So we have to actually come down on the side there. Come down the side like that. To make it work. So let's go ahead and get our soldering iron warmed up and get our solder out and start soldering this thing up. Go ahead and start stripping and checking the wires up while we're waiting on that solder iron to warm up. So like I said I'm gonna be coming through here like so. Where's my wire cutters at? Still using these old wire cutters. Kind of rusty. I need to get some new ones. But let's go ahead and we'll come in through the side there so it's not blocking that port. Actually, also, let's go ahead and put the sleeves over too, just in case. Just so we're not. gonna have to redo it there so we got that we're gonna come through this little side here nice and tidy and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually take my what's it call it where is it? my razor blade if I can find it it's probably sitting right in front of me oh, there it is and I'm gonna mark it so we're going to actually spend a little more time cutting these up. So I know I have to do it right there. Same thing on this side. Let me zoom in so you guys can see. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is bring these wires in through this little kind of cubby right there. And then I'm just going to mark it with my knife. Where I want to cut it. So I'm just going to do a little indent there. Make sure it's nice and flat. There, indent there. And the last one right there. A little indent there. So let's get the soldering iron warmed up and let's go ahead and cut these wires to length. Now to find where I cut it. Try it. This one is that didn't work out as great as I wanted to. Thought I can see. Oh, I see it. Right there. And then this one.
this one's the closest to me. So this one should go right there. There. Just going to strip these up. I feel like I have two that are too long. Maybe not. That seems okay. That seems right. So let's strip them up. I like to use the wire cutters I've used them. Sometimes I use the uh, razor blade to cut the wires. That's too much. Strip them all up. Now let's go ahead and tin all the wires up. And tin the pads on the ESCs. So, let's do the pads on the ESCs first. Got a lot of side of there. Just want to touch it. right in there. Perfect little globs. Let's get that away from the ESC so we don't make a mess. Let's feed that to the wire. Oh yeah, that's way too much on there. Take that off. Last one there. See, I made a mistake and cut that one a little too short. All right. Just want to make sure I'm grabbing the right ones for the right side. We're going to do this one. There it is. And there's that one. So that's that. Let's check a look at the. Let me take a closer look at them, make sure they're nice and good. Yeah, those are perfect, almost. So let's go ahead and do the rest of them here, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so I have it all soldered up. All the motors are soldered onto the ESC, as you see. Looks real sexy there. Next step, we're going to go ahead and do is now the. Hobbywing uh, F4 and flight controller came with some harnesses, so I'm just going to kind of point those out to you. These are all the harnesses it came with. So which one am I going to be using? I'm going to be using the short one, but this one, if you notice, has two missing, and it has a shorter plug on this side, so we're not using this one. This one and this one is for the side harness on the flight controller for the camera and VTX and all that stuff. So we don't need that for right now. And we don't need a longer one, so we don't need that. We're going to be using the shorter one right here. And we just got to make sure we line up the pins on here so they're up and up. So we're just going to plug that in there. Like so. 
make sure it's all nice and straight like so and then we're just going to slide our flight controller on top and then we can just go ahead and plug it in just bring that over plug it in and um, I went over a lot of what these um, ports are here for. We have 10 volts and ground, battery, current, ground, 5 volts, and other, um, and then all the signal pads for the motors. But, and I believe this is a pass-through, so any 10 volt pins on here are just powered through the ESC. So that's how it works with that and then the five I believe is going to get this five volt power from the five volt pin there and then the current is where it's going to get its, how it's going to get its battery voltage so the current sensor i believe that's how it would work and if you're not using this flight controller with another one you could actually hook up your video and all that stuff on these pins right in the front actually yeah in the front of towards you and then we have our pins here to connect our auxiliary advice devices which we'll be using the unify the you can see the unify on the camera unify and the micro predator v3 so i think this should do it for this video here i don't want to make it too long um but in the next video we'll go ahead and connect everything else up we also have well, i'm also forgot to show you i'm also using the uh nano crossfire receiver in this as well um, so we'll have that as well to install in the next video. So all the accessories will do the next video and this video is pretty much just the main hardware on the flight, on the flight controller and ESC. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Look forward to the next one. Should be coming up real soon. And I'll see you guys in another video. Peace.